I'm at the heart of Thailand's most controversial Buddhist sect, as tens of thousands of its most fervent followers celebrate its 50th birthday. The Dhammakaya sect has three million devotees and centers in 30 countries, including the UK and America. I felt like I was on the set of a missing Star Trek episode and I couldn't help feeling that this may be Buddhism, but not as we know it. They say it's modern Buddhism for modern times. Their critics say they're a sinister, money-obsessed cult led by a rogue monk who thinks he's God. I've been invited to attend the sect's birthday party by one of its most zealous devotees. The temple's had a lot of bad press and can be quite suspicious of outsiders, so I'm hoping to blend in with the faithful, which is why I've come here, because there's a dress code. June has her own clothes business. She's just the sort of wealthy follower the Dhammakaya sect is famous for attracting. What, what's the reason for the uniform? ค่ะจนก็มีรวยก็มีนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยพอทุกคนใส่ยูนิฟอร์มเดียวกันทั้งหมดปุ๊บเนี่ยเราจะไม่แบ่งแยก
นะคะก็คือการตามมันจะถูกรื้อฟื้นมาอีกครั้งนะคะก็คือการตามหาตัวพระธรรมชโย The monks drove the soldiers back, and Abbot de Maggio hasn't been seen since. His representatives deny the allegations and say they don't know where he is. There are rumors that de Maggio has left the country, or even died. But he still has a place in the hearts and minds of his followers, and a portrait in the temple museum. Will we see him again one day? Mm. His answer surprises me. Some people uh, take care of him nearby. Oh, okay. But actually, he uh, give some dharma to us every day. When? Um, night time. Dharma means teaching. Incredibly, he seems to be telling me that the abbot is alive and well and living nearby, but he won't elaborate. I go to talk to someone who can tell me more. Dr. Mano Lahanovic was once a leading member of the sect. I know the abbot very well, second only to my parents. After 20 years, he claims he left because he thought the abbot was turning the sect into a money-making cult. Was there a key moment when you thought, that's it, I can't do this anymore? When he tried to reveal to me that he is God with capital G. I cannot work with God. I can work with human beings. Fallible human beings can work with, but never God. You paint this dark picture of the temple. The temple followers I meet are all, to a person, kind and open and willing to show us around. That, that's true. That's the nature of all cults in the world. I never said the disciple of this community is bad. No, they are good people, moral-minded, but the fact remains, they never knew what the, temp what the abbot has spent the money. Unlike the majority of Thai temples, the Dhammakaya movement chooses not to publish its accounts. Does anyone know how much the temple receives and where the money goes? Never declare. They keep it secret all the time, from beginning until now. Dr. Mano takes me back to his flat. He shows me a commemorative hammer that the sect gave to followers who donated 200,000 baht, 5,000 pounds. Then this is 200,000. That's 200,000. That's a lot of money for a hammer. 200,000? Yeah. They give you this. Donors were told the money went to new buildings. One working Dr. Mano claims the abbot has dreams of global domination. And the abbot was very fond of Adolf Hitler, you see. This is his icon. Hitler started with zero, he started with zero, and he, Hitler created three steps to become the leader, the dictator I, of Germany. Dr. Right? Mano, that's, I have to stop you. I mean, that, comparing the abbot to Hitler is a pretty big allegation. What evidence do you have that he is influenced by Hitler? Well, he told me that Hitler was a good guy. The abbot de Maggio and the sect deny all of Dr. Mano's allegations. I tell him one of the monks implied the abbot was still living nearby. He says he can show me exactly where. This is the gate. 50 meters from here is the location where the abbot is hiding. What's he doing down there? Hiding. Thailand's justice minister recently called on the police to renew their efforts to arrest the abbot, so far with no results. How do you know he's there? How can you be so sure he's there? Well, believe me, I have a mole. So, drive on. At the Dhammakaya sect headquarters, the anniversary event is in full swing.
in signs and over the tannoy, were exhorted to give cash. It's unimaginably vast, and I think the big surprise is the emphasis on making donations to the temple. There are offering boxes everywhere. Behind me there's a big office that accepts gifts from temple members, and beside it is a massive queue for two cash points where the faithful can get their money out. Other Buddhist groups ask for donations, but none with the sophistication of the Dhammakaya sect. It's not every temple that has one of these in it. We peer into the special office that deals with mega donors like Joom. They love donations. They're not so keen on publicity. But they do give her a medal and a receipt, another stamp in her passport to Nirvana. I'm on my way to meet a group of people who unwittingly gave millions to the sect. They're the victims of the scandal that triggered the raid on the temple. Money was stolen from bank accounts and given to the abbot. They want the abbot put on trial to establish whether he knew the money was stolen. Three million. Three million. They lost sums ranging from 50 to 250,000 pounds. They tell me how they deposited their savings in a bank run by a sect devotee. But it turned out he'd embezzled its funds and given them to the abbot. The temple says the abbot didn't know the source of the donation and it raised money to help victims. But these people say they haven't received any. The government denies it, but supporters of Damakaya say the charges against the abbot are politically motivated and the government is threatened by its popularity. June's giving me a tour of the buildings her money's helped pay for. She refuses to believe that anything the abbot has done is in any way criminal. <laughs> you put seven yeah. million baht into that building? Yeah. Wow. Seven million baht is almost 150,000 pounds. And that's not all she's given. <laughs> June's husband is now one of the 4,000 resident monks. She says it was a conscious uncoupling and that it will bring them both spiritual benefits. I'm starting to think that June must be loaded, so I'm keen to see where she lives and excited when she invites me round for dinner. But June's house isn't grand. It doubles as a workshop. This is where you do make the clothes, okay. She tells me her parents were poor and she came to Bangkok aged just 14 with nothing. She says her fortunes changed when she joined the Dhammakaya sect 25 years ago and began giving cash. This is at the heart of the missing abbot's appeal. 
Unlike other Buddhist groups, he teaches that donations buy you wealth in this life as well as your future lives. And there he is, Abbot de Maggio, delighted to receive her donation for £25,000, and even more delighted when she turned up with £125,000. I calculate that her total donations must be over a million pounds. Chum's story is amazing. She came from this background of extreme poverty and worked her way up to the point where she's able to give away a small fortune to the temple. And she seems completely happy about it. There are a lot of people like June who believe the temple when it promises them that by giving money away, they can be assured of riches in this life and the next. In Bangkok, you see Buddhist temples everywhere. All of them take donations. But critics say that the abbot has taken this tradition to a new level. In a suburb of the capital, I meet Chachai, someone who says the sect has destroyed his life. Kun Chachai, if it's not a rude question, how old are you? Oh, 65. 65. Oh, you look very good for 65. Really? Yeah. He used to be a successful chemical engineer with his own company. His work was even recognized by the Prime Minister. This is me uh, receiving the Prime Minister Award from President Thaksin Shinawat. Now he's a broken man. He says his wife gradually cleaned out his savings and donated almost 300,000 pounds to the Dhammakaya sect. It may be a really suffer life because I found out too late. He says the sect manipulated his wife into giving away their money. She addicted to the way of blessing in Tamakaya temple. Addicted to blessing and also addicted to donation. You feel your wife's been brainwashed and it's destroyed your marriage? Brainwashed by evil cult. You think it's an evil cult? Evil cult. And how are things between you now? Uh, we don't miss each other. We don't speak to each other. He wants me to understand the damage it's done to his family. These are photos during our wedding ceremony and my mom got very angry and she cut all the pictures of my wife out from the photo album. I feel upset because actually I still love my wife. But she is just only the prey of uh, the temple. Chat Chai's wife told us his claims about her being brainwashed aren't true and that she only donated her own money to the temple. I've heard extraordinary claims about the Dhammakaya sect, both good and bad. To make sense of it, I'm meeting one of Thailand's most eminent Buddhist scholars. Professor Sulak Sivaraksa has been nominated twice for the Nobel Peace Prize and won praise from the Dalai Lama. He tells me that he thinks the Dhammakaya sect's focus on wealth is a threat to Buddhism. Dhammakaya promoting capitalism, consumerism. People love to be rich. He says the sect's emphasis on donations is ruining lives. 
the followers, many of them are, are good people, but they have been fooled and blindly they gave everything away, which the family suffered, and a lot of, of family broken, you know. Do you think the abbot will ever emerge to face the music? He has plenty of money, and in this country, money can buy anything. I'm back at the sect's headquarters. I want to ask them about the embezzled money, about Chachai's allegation that his wife was manipulated, Dr. Mano's claims about the abbot, and why, if he's innocent, the abbot doesn't come out of hiding and say so. The temple has agreed to let us talk to a senior official. We arrive early and wait. And wait. And wait. We came here on the promise of an interview and they keep changing the person they say is gonna to speak to us. And now I'm starting to think that maybe we're not gonna get an interview at all because we've been here for two and a half hours. In the absence of the abbot, no one wants to put themselves in the line of fire. So it's been a kind of absurd and farcical afternoon. After three hours of toing and froing, which included a free meditation lesson, it became clear that no one was going to give us an interview. And eventually, a kindly junior monk took us to one side and said that the situation was too sensitive and no one would speak to us. The sect's anniversary celebrations are reaching a climax. Its rituals give no hint of the passion and controversy that it arouses in Thailand. The abbot built this temple to last for a thousand years. But I wonder how long it can fight on without its enigmatic leader at the helm. Thanks for watching. Click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.